So we will continue the discussion on the, of the 8051 architecture and we will discuss the port and the pin structures of 8051. We have already seen that 8051 has 4 I.O. ports and each of these 4 I.O. ports P0 to P3 have 8 port pins. So effectively we have 32 input output lines. So in this video we will go ahead and see how we can use these ports for basically two functions. So the first function is to read data that is ones and zeros and the second function is to write data so again it is one or zero now apart from this there are alternate pin functions for all of the ports and as discussed previously port 0 and port 3 are used for external memory addressing and port 1 and port 2 have some different alternate pin functions like the SPI and UART as discussed previously. Now to use a 8051 port as a digital input output we need to remember a couple of things so the first is the port 0 does not have internal pull up so if you plan to use port 0 a external pull up needs to be connected so what does this does is if, if we have a port 0 pin say this is port 0, 0.0 by default this will float so there is no fix 0 or 1 on this so to use this pin uh, as output or input we need to connect it to a pull up resistor to VCC so this is the one point to remember the second thing is whenever we are using A051 as input one needs to be written on the port pin so before we use that and why we need to do these two functions uh, we'll see that I mean why this is required why port 0 uh, requires a pull up and why one needs to be written before you could use any of the pins uh, to read data from the outside variables. If you want to know uh, these two, continue watching the video or if you simply want to use the port pins as uh, digital I.O. just remember these two things and uh, you are ready to go and program the controller. Alright, so let's see port 1 in detail. We'll go back to port 0 later. Let's see uh, port 1 in, uh, in detail. So the port 1 structure is shown here. So what we have is, uh, this is the physical pin that is there on the controller. This is the physical pin. So it is internally pulled up so what you can see is uh, it will be tied to ECC by default so uh, what happens we need to check uh, how we need how we can read or write uh, zeros and ones to these pins now uh, so let us start let us start uh, by looking at what these read or write latches are so this 
A read latch is used to read data from an external pin uh, for, for, to read the latch status. And uh, the read pin buffer, it is used to read uh, the physical pin. Now, uh, what is the difference between these two? Now, uh, some instructions which need to only know the pin status. Okay, So these read the latch um, and these instructions use the read latch buffer. Other instructions do not just read uh, the latch of the pin but they modify uh, the pin status as well. So those uh, those instructions use the read pin buffer. Now let us go ahead and first see how we can write a 1 or 0 on the port pin. So, uh, to write a 1 or 0, uh, the internal bus, the internal bus uh, writes a 1, say to write a 1, so writes a 1, and uh, so, the, so uh, when we enable or when the instructions get executed, uh, this 1 appears here the output of latch. Now uh, the Q bar of this latch turns 0 and once this is turned uh, 0 this is turned off. So this is turned off uh, so what happens is the VCC flows to the output. Thus we transmit 1 to output. Now to write a zero, what happens is uh, the internal bus writes a zero here, then the Q output is zero after the instruction executes, and then uh, Q bar turns one, and in this case, the FAT is turned on. Turned on in the sense the VCC flows to ground. So the status at this pin will be zero. So the output data zero is transferred to the pin. So this is how a zero is output. Now uh, let me just clear this and we'll see how it can be used as input to read the data. All right, so We'll see how uh, we can use port zero to read one and zero from the uh, external device. So uh, this operation is pretty simple. So uh, what happens is whenever we write, uh, when we want to uh, read one or uh, zero from the controller, we need to write uh, one to the D latch first. So uh, what happens is when we write one to the D latch, uh, it gets get latched and the Q bar uh, is zero and this transistor is turned off. So what happens is, uh, this transistor is turned off and uh, the pin is pulled high. So, uh, so whenever we read a pin, whenever the read pin buffer is turned on, the internal bus will have one by default. Now, if an external device gives one, uh, then it is directly uh, taken to the internal bus. So uh, one is read directly. So whenever a zero appears on the uh, internal bus again, so in this case as well, this zero is zero is carried over because uh, the transistor is turned off. So this zero is carried to the internal bus. So uh, one thing to remember here is uh, so before writing a one I mean uh, reading a one or zero from the external device from the pin the latch needs to be written to one. So as a very important point and say uh, while writing code we write a zero initially to this port and then we want to read data from the pin uh, it is not possible so what happens let's see what happens 
if there is a zero on the latch. So if there is a zero on the latch, so if there is a zero in the latch, uh, so let's say this is zero, uh, and this is zero, and the Q bar is one. So this, this uh, FAD is turned on. So what happens when the FAD is turned on is, uh, whatever comes on the port pin is grounded. So if we have one uh, on, on the external device, it will become zero because it gets connected to ground. So, uh, so anything we write uh, becomes read becomes zero. So that is the reason it is important uh, when using 8051 as input to write a one on the port first before reading the pin. So this is about reading and writing on port zero. Port uh, one, two, and three are similar. Uh, so this is port one. So port zero, two, and three are similar. So we'll see them in in a quicker fashion. So and now this is port two. Uh, before that, uh, this is used to access external memory and. Uh, so this is address and data line. So this is the input uh, for the address and this effectively is your pin if you are accessing external memory. So in this case we will see how it is used to read or write 0, 1 uh, from the controller. So in that case this control line uh, will always be 0. So, uh, now if this is 0 effectively this turns off this AND gate. This, uh, since one input of AND gate is zero, the address or data never passes to the uh, port pin. So this is always turned off. Now, uh, and also one more thing to observe is when this is zero, uh, this is two is to one multiplexer, and this is the selection line for the multiplexer. If selection line is zero, uh, only this input only the zeroth input is selected always so eventually this is turned off so what we have is uh, the q latch it is connected to the fet the q bar of the port latch is connected to the fet when we using for a digital io now as before we have two functions one is to uh, read one or zero from from the pin and the other is to write one or zero let's see the read operation first so uh, to read again uh, uh, we know by uh, you know in the beginning we need to uh, write a one to the uh, latch first so when we write a one so what happens is this one carries over here and we have zero here so now this is turned off and by default uh, we have a floating pin so now this is uh, very important now since this is uh, a floating so if if the device external device gives one one is red and if the external device uh, gives zero zero is red so the important point is we need to write one before reading anything so uh, this is one point and we'll see an important point when uh, writing one or zero. Now let me just clear this and then we'll continue with the write operation. Alright so let's see the write operation here. Now uh, when we write a zero let's start with a zero here. So when we write a zero to the internal bus this is uh, last and again uh, as we have seen in the previous case uh, since we are doing a IO operation this control line is zero and it turns off the AND gate as well as uh, this input so the multiplexer is directly connected uh, here okay now when we write a zero so this becomes this becomes one and then we have one on the output 
and since this is 1 this transistor is turned on So once this is turned on, uh, this is this point now as you can see it's it's floating. It's neither one or zero. So uh, what happens is although the transistor is turned on, there is no fixed voltage at this point. So the important thing here is, uh, and this state is called the high impedance. So whenever we are dealing with port zero uh, the pin by default is in high impedance state so uh, even if we try to uh, write a zero or one uh, it will always be high impedance so this is the reason we connect a external pull up so our external pull up is connected uh, on all the pins of port zero so so, so this is tied again to VCC and this will be a value of about 10 kilo ohms. And now, uh, now let's start with the zero. So if you write a zero, so we have zero on the output latch and then this multiplexer selects the one here. This is turned on. This is turned on and uh, the VCC from the pull up register flows to the ground and then we have zero here so uh, the port pin is written a zero similarly when we try and write a one uh, what happens is uh, if we write uh, one here this one comes over and this is zero this FET is turned off so this is turned off and this is completely uh, turned off so uh, the VCC from the pull up resistor flows to the output pin thus we will have a 1 on the port output pin so uh, we'll move ahead and look at the uh, other ports so this is this we already seen the port 0 so we, we need to check port 2 and port 3 now uh, this is port 2 is similar to port 1 but the only difference is it has uh, uh, internal pull up so there is a pull up uh, internally so you need not uh, connect an external pull up here uh, the function is exactly similar uh, to the uh, port 0 which is again uh, used for accessing external memory now if you look at the last port which is uh, port 3 so uh, what you could see right away here is there's an AND gate, uh, sorry, an AND gate uh, to control the port, and uh, you could also observe that the there is an alternate output function uh, pin which controls this. So let us try go ahead and look at the output table of an AND gate uh, so that we can analyze. Um, this particular function so uh, so let's say these are the two inputs so one is the alternate function input and the other is the output of the latch so the two inputs so if they are zero zero the output of the NAND is one is, uh, zero added with zero zero and then when we invert the output is one so if it is 0 and 1, and the output is again 1. If 1, 0, the output is 1. And the only case when the output is 0 is both zeros, and both inputs are 1 and 1. So if 1 and 1, the output is 0. Now, uh, now for this to work as a digital input output, uh, so you could, what you could observe is if if the say this is the so let's say that this is the alternate output function let me turn this input as AOF and the other input is Q from the latch so uh, so if this has to receive one or zero from the input say the first operation let us assume that we are writing one and zero to the point 
So for uh, this input to be active, for the Q input to be active, uh, so uh, to be active, this needs to be A of always needs to be 1 and 1 because if it is 0, 0, irrespective of what Q is, uh, the output of NAND gate will always be 1. So uh, for, for this to operate properly, the AOF needs to be always 1. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can write a 1 here. So to write a 1, we write a 1 to the internal bus. This Q is 1. Now when both inputs are 1 and 1, the output of the NAND gate is 0. So when this is 0, this is turned off. So when this is turned off, the 1 flows out. So we have written a 1 here. So when this is completely turned off, uh, the VCC flows to the output pin. Now we'll see the case wherein uh, we'll write a 0. So if I write a 0 here, then the Q output will be 0. Now if this is 1 and 0, this is the case. So this is 1 and 0, this bit will be 1. And when this bit is 1, the FAD is turned on. So when this is turned on, the VCC runs down to ground. So, uh, so we have uh, one ground here, so there is no voltage. So we have written a 0 to the output. Now, similarly, uh, this al alternate pin function uh, output can be controlled uh, from the input uh, in cases where it is used uh, for the alternate pin function, especially for the SPI. Now, let us have a quick uh, review of uh, the details here. And uh, in, in order to use the A051 port, so the first thing we need to note is whenever we use port 0 external pull up is required because we've seen that uh, the pins are high in pin state and uh, to make it to a stable state we need external pull up and the second input important thing is for all the ports port 0 port 1 port 2 and port 3 if we are using them as inputs to read data then uh, we need to write one to the latch first so the latch needs to be written one so uh, if you're writing a c instruction uh, to read inputs from the port pins what we usually do is we write port one as zero x f f first so what this does is it makes all the input port pins on port 1 as inputs so this is one important point to remember so uh, to to review again so whenever you're using port 0 uh, ensure that you have connected an external pull up and whenever you're using all of the four ports to read inputs uh, first a one needs to be written on the port latch. So if you're writing a C instruction, a simple thing would be simply write FF on the port which you're trying to use as input. Thank you for watching.